welcome back. Another hey. episode. Hi, Claudio. <laughs> Thank you. Nice to be back. So, <laughs> so today we're going to talk about Animalize, the follow-up of uh, Lick It Up. Tell me what was your first, uh, what's your earliest recollection of talking about the concept for the album cover? My general recollection of, of that time period was that that was really a low spot. This I kind of do remember. Okay. It was kind of a low, a really a low spot for the band. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't think Gene was around at all, hardly ever. Uh, only Paul, the other guys you never saw. Well, Gene was doing a movie with Tom Selleck in Hollywood. Yeah, yeah, that's it. There you go. So uh, <clears throat> it's I, I, probably my least favorite album cover that I had anything to do with. I mean, it just seems like I, uh, in, in recollection, I just kind of did it kind of fast, threw it together. Not a lot of concept there, as you can see. Um, Whose idea was it, yours or Paul's? I don't know. I don't remember. Probably mine, because it's, it's not a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> it's, not, it's not. I take full responsibility, what, who, whose ever idea it was. Because even if it was his, it's still my responsibility in the end. I'm, I'm the last guy in the line, you know, uh, to, to make a decision. I can always talk him out of it, at least to a, you know, a certain amount, to a certain aspect. But, but I, I just remember asking uh, the costume person who was Fleur. Do you know who that is? The, the costume designer? Yeah. Fleur de Meyer, she was a big deal in the 80s. She did wardrobe for anybody who was somebody in the 80s. She worked for a Chip Trick, Marley Crew, uh, Olivia Newton-John, Ozzy, Van Halen, Lita Four, Rat, Journey, Hard, you name it. I mean, she worked with everybody. A lot of the glitter, multicolor wardrobe of the 80s, most of it was her. Uh, this this uh, can, uh, Australian lady called uh, Fleur the, the Mayor. And uh, she was the one who kind of uh, put this look on, on, on MTV, this glittery look. She was into all of that. Uh, Fleur was kind of hanging around our offices during this period of time. Okay. Uh, and I guess she was working on the Kiss costumes and so she had to be in our offices here and there now and then. I bet her. Somebody said, uh, here's Flora, and she's doing the costumes. I said, okay. Uh, you know, she was there. She came into the art department a couple of times. Um, she was um, a very pretty girl, a very pretty lady, you know. And, no, I've, uh, seen her, I've seen her pictures from like the uh, 70s, and she was, a, she was a knockout. She was beautiful. Yeah, yeah she was. And... Um, and I found out she was Billy Squire's girlfriend mm -hmm. during this during this period. And you know, we we worked with Billy Squire. We did uh, Piper album covers mm -hmm. and uh, did his logo, uh, et cetera. My sister designed the Piper logo. Uh, so wow, small known fact, but huh. she's a designer, you know. And I gave her a job, and she she uh, they they liked it. So they, uh, anyway. Um, so I, you know, I didn't know what to do for the animalized cover. And, um, in, in my view, it's, it's not, uh, it, it falls in the, in the lower echelon of, uh, good album covers, you know, it's just not the greatest. I, I, I understand, but it fits the name, the title and the concept. Uh, that it does. I didn't fail completely. It's just, uh, you know. And I, I had to get something done. I had to, you know, don't forget, everything was always time sensitive. Yeah, I don't know. And, and Kiss weren't the only client you were dealing with. Well, that's right. I, I was a busy guy. Yeah, I know. And uh, so uh, I said, I know. I'll, I, I like to see these patterns and textures close up. And we'll just have a bold graphic looking cover. If I could get some of these materials. So I asked her, I said, do you have some scraps and stuff that I can put together? And she left me some, not enough. I wish I had more because I only had a few. I mean, what you see on that cover is really pretty much what she gave me. There's nothing wow. left over. Was so that I, was that a real animal uh, feather? <laughs> no, or? No, it wasn't. Um, it was, it was, well. <laughs> 
Uh, you know what they do sometimes? They will take um, an animal skin like cowhide. Oh, and they, they would paint a tint it. And then they, they print on it. or, or Right, printing, yes. Yeah, I put a different maybe. pattern yeah, on yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, maybe. And I think that's one or two of those were like that. So um, uh, not the leopard one. I think that's faux fur. Mm -hmm. But I think the zebra one is like that. But it's fair to say, but it's fair to say it's the same material she was using for their wardrobe. Oh, absolutely it was. It was left over from her. It was left over from her collection. So it's the same. Absolutely. Cool. Same. So I rearranged it and I tried. I remember being very dissatisfied with the arrangement I was getting. Hmm. And I pushed it around and underlapped it and overlapped it and I might have even trimmed a little bit, but I couldn't trim too much. I didn't have much to work with. Did you, uh, did you did you take photos of all those combinations or just the final one that is diagonal? No, I just put one together. I just put one together in that diagonal layout uh -huh. and, and brought it to a, a young photographer. I was trying to give her some work. I'm surprised she, had, she doesn't have a credit on that album. I don't think there's a credit, is there? Do you know? That's a good question. Let me see. Cover design, Howard Marks advertising. No, <laughs> no, no photo, uh, no photo credit. I'll put it out there right now. Pam Shapiro. <laughs> Excellent. Pam. Good for her. She did a great job. Yeah, thank you, Pam. Uh, thank you, Pam. She she was a beginning photographer. Yes, I was friends with a couple. Mm -hmm. named uh, uh, Jeff Shapiro mm -hmm. and his wife, Sid. Okay. Uh, Jeff shortened his name from Shapiro to Hap, H-A-P. He dropped Hello? the F. I'm sorry, what was that? His name is Shapiro. Okay. But he, he shortened his name. And he took the S off the beginning <laughs> and the O off the end. And it's Hap. And his wife is Sid or Sydney. And so she was Sid Hap. She was the one who made the Kiss Marionettes. Oh, wow. I didn't, I wasn't aware of that. Yeah. She was a fabulous uh, marionette maker. Fabulous. And she did likenesses. She built and sewed all the costumes, little mm -hmm. details. Really, really great. So they were friends with us, and we had dinner at their apartment all the time, and they came up to our apartment all the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jeff's, uh, Jeff's uh, younger sister, our, Pam. Our, our apartment meaning with you and your wife when you were married back then. Yeah, 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 that's right. Okay. I, bar I barely remember. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so Jeff's younger sister was Pam. Mm -hmm. Pam wanted to be a photographer. Jeff was a photographer. Uh, he did more uh, 35 millimeter reportage kind of quick stuff. He shot my wedding. He, he documented my whole wedding mm -hmm. came over. That was his wedding gift to us. He just documented. The yeah, whole you thing. told me you told me that story. Yes. Oh, OK. It was great. So that was Jeff. So his younger sister. So I said, I said, hey, Pam, I got it. It's a still life. Very simple. I said, you just got to light it. And it's a. Uh, animal skins that I pasted up on a piece of cardboard. And uh, I just want to see the texture real nice. So light it well. And uh, I didn't even go to the photo shoot. I was at a very depressed stage at that point. Very, mm -hmm. I was tired of everything, you know. Where you, were, so, you were burned, overworked. I was overworked, burned out, pissed off, drunk. Uh, I don't forget that. And uh, I was just tired of working for that agency. Uh, I was underpaid and overworked, you know. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but I gave the job to Pam because I like Pam. And it wasn't a big challenging photography job. It was just do a good job, light it and shoot it. And she had an 8x10 view camera, which is what this needed to be done. Yeah, on. yeah. Because really, I wanted a really sharp, beautiful shot. Exactly, right. And so Pam did it, and that was that. And that's how that's that's how that happened. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Um, there was no talk at all about getting them together for a, a front cover shot. I don't know why. Uh, I don't know why. But so I did what I did, and uh, that became the cover. The only creative aspect was my lettering, Animal Eyes, which I did. Uh, I went to the, the men's room in our office, and I took a piece of paper towel out of the dispenser and I brought it back to the uh, art department, and I, I glued it down flat, <laughs> and I took, uh, I took some India ink and a, and a brush, and because I knew the paper towel would give a very rough look to the brush stroke. And so that I did animalize and I did it relatively quickly. Not to, I don't think I had to do three or four or 10, 10 tries before I got one I liked. A lot of times when you do that sort of hand lettering, brush lettering, crazy lettering, you get a good letter from one try and a better letter from another try and you cut it up, put it together and get one good one. But this one flowed, came out pretty well. So it was toilet paper? <laughs> Well, paper towel, paper. and uh, that's what it was. Aha, okay, all right. You know, the, and the funny thing is, uh, I've been copying your, 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 your typing for <laughs> another band that hires me to do their album covers, and they love that animalized uh, lettering. And <laughs> they ask me, can you find out what font it is? And I, yeah, said, right. <laughs> I, think, I don't think that's a font. I think it was done uh, just, for, just for that. So yeah, it's called, uh, uh, yeah, it's called paper towel. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I believe it or not, I, I can send this to you if you want it. I made a brush on Photoshop just for the animalized layering, and you just do one stroke and you get the same effect. <laughs> See? Well, we were old school back then. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. I know, Paul saw it and he, he said, can you make it rougher? <laughs> I said, it's rough. How rough do you want to get, you know? I, I fooled around a little bit with a tiny minimal, you know, I said, is that a little better, you know? Trying to make them happy, but I didn't really want to mess with it because I thought it looked perfect the way it was, so. And then you brought back some colors to the logo. He has yellow and what else does he have, turquoise? It's kind of turquoise and yellow, I think. Oh, uh, the outline. The outline is yellow, right? No, the, the solid part of the kiss is yellow. Right. And then the outline is turquoise. Sort of like a turquoise, yeah. Yeah. Very hard to see on the small card, but there it is. Mm-hmm. And uh, God knows why I chose those colors. I have no idea. Well, they were trendy at the time. There were a lot of, uh, Paul was wearing turquoise in this. Maybe that's, yeah, maybe that's what it was. So, uh, I don't know. I look at this and I, you know, I dislike it. And then I look at it again sometimes later and I say, you know, not bad. So. Well, it's uh, it's minimalistic. I mean, it is what it is. You know, I mean, and it's different than a lot of others. And mm-hmm. uh, who knows? I, I remember personally being very, uh, uh, down at that period and uh, I didn't have a lot of energy and uh, Kiss was not the latest greatest most exciting thing anymore right around the office there were old old story and uh, you know instead of being exciting and happy and wow all that it was more or less a big pain in the ass you know could be I mean could be so I tried to yeah, keep it in there, you know, I did what I did. And uh, so all, I mean, all the work and all the expense went into the back cover. Yeah, talk about this. You hired, yeah. you hired Bernard again for this, yeah. uh, for this uh, picture. Yeah. And uh, I understand you, you went to a quarry to do the, the photo? Yeah, a sand quarry. A sand quarry, okay. Yeah, they got sand. It was out way out on Long Island, whatever town it was, I don't know. Always, always in the middle of the night. Why? <laughs> Three in the morning, God damn. So we, we met on Madison Avenue. We all got into a little little bus that everybody, they hired. Everybody, even the band? The band, it was in the bus, yeah. And, uh, and me and... Roseanne 
I think that was it from the office. And then uh, I don't know who else was on the bus besides that. Then Bernard had his own transportation for his crew. He had at least four guys with him and himself and a lot of equipment. I mean, Bernard, <laughs> if nothing else, he thought big, you know, he hired people. He had stuff being built. He rented space. He, you know, he was, he was the man, I'll tell you, <laughs> Bernard. So uh, there's a lot of uh, kind of, uh, kind of metal, uh, metal. We're trying to do the uh, industrial. Metal look. flooring, and then there's this column here. And, and That's like a, to, I guess like a smokestack maybe is supposed to be. And then this is a, gr a grating that you would see in the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. Like in New York, you know, you see these gratings and what's down there is the subway. You could hear it. So uh, he tried, we tried for an industrial look mm -hmm. with that stuff and- uh, Well, around this time, uh, there were, there were uh, the, uh, the trend in Hollywood where post-apocalyptic movies like Mad Max and- Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, good. So yeah. I guess that he was going for that kind of concept. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Now that you bring it up, you know, I mean, it's something that just skipped my mind right now, but that's true. So that industrial post-apocalyptic uh, stuff uh, uh, was was around, and uh, you know, they even uh, used some of that ideas for some of the videos of Lick It Up. They were in this kind of a uh, debris ruin type of post-apocalyptic. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I wonder where they shot that. It looked like the South Bronx. It's. Uh, I think I think they've shot the Warriors there. Remember that movie? Yeah, didn't see it, but remember and probably kiss took a lot of ideas from that movie the warriors yeah it's a it was a bad time in new york really um the 70s and into the 80s was uh you know pretty horrible i mean the 70s times square was just porn and prostitutes and drugs and it's all it was it's was actually that's the middle of new york times square when you think of New York, you kind of think of that area, and the shame of it was it was it was a, a, a cesspool. And if you walk down the street, you'd be propositioned five times before you went ten feet. Wow! So it wasn't the parade of uh, tourists that it is. Well, I mean, if they came, that's what they ran into, and uh, <laughs> so uh, our mayor uh, Rudy Giuliani became the mayor, and he. He cleaned it up. He turned it into Disneyland, really. And now it's squeaky clean, beautiful. A lot of... Uh, you also had you also had that uh, terrible blackout in 1977. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Lots of uh, rioting and looting. Yeah. You know, uh, West Side Story, the movie? Yeah. And, uh, you know, the dancing scene that these guys are doing, and it looks like tenement houses. Uh, in the background, all the old New York tenement houses, and there might be some destruction and rubble, I can't quite remember. But that was done on the west side. And that was done just before they built Lincoln Center. And they were gonna rip down blocks and blocks of these buildings that were there and build Lincoln Center, brand new shiny art, cult cultural mecca. And, uh, but the, the movie company had them delay the destruction so that they could shoot their scenes. So if you look at uh, West Side Story, that's what that's kind of like the, the South Bronx. So going back to the to this to the photo shoot. Oh yeah, so there we are at uh, two, three in the morning. And uh, he's got this little trench dug out. Yeah, with fire there, right? Yeah, and then they filled it with uh, some flammable stuff. And then they go, ready? Everybody ready? Okay, and two, three, boom, light it up. Snap, 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 snap. Then we take a break. Then they move things around and get it ready to go again. And yeah, and then Paul comes over to me and I'm standing there, you know, I'm, you know, in one way wishing I wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, in another way, trying to figure out how to make this better, uh, which I couldn't. I just kept looking at it going, well, well the, the thing that's in my mind a lot 
uh, about this shoot is that went through a lot of trouble and expense and people and equipment and this concept and it just wasn't worth it. I mean, the, 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 the impact of that shot doesn't have what it should have had. You mean, it should have, been, should have been, oh, look at that. You mean the landscape? Yeah, the whole business, the whole thing, the image. Oh, look at that. Oh, wow. Oh, that's cool. You don't quite get that. You just look at it and go, well, all right. Yeah, yeah you could have done this on a set. Right? Could have been in a studio. Yeah, you know. studio. You yeah, the studio was big enough. So, um, and that's what Paul said to me. He came over and he said, uh, I'm not feeling the magic here. <laughs> and he was, he was kind of right. And I said, uh, well, you know, Paul, uh, me neither. <laughs> me neither. I said, but you know what happens a lot? I try to make him feel a little better. I said, you know what happens a lot, Paul? We're in it, we're doing it, we're not seeing it, you know, really, and because we're working. I said, but when we get back, the film gets processed, we'll look at these images, and we may be happily surprised and say, oh, look, look how great. Right. Uh, <laughs> let me ask you something. It's not terrible, it's just, it's just, it didn't have the impact that it should have had. Right. Yeah. Well, I tell you, it's a it's a nice photo shoot. It's well nice. Lit. nice, yeah. It's well lit. And well, you talk about retouching and pain in the ass. Paul's foot. I don't know which one, this one or that one. It might have been that back one, but he had it in an angle that he hated in the, in the shot. Uh -huh. so he said, "Can you take this the foot from the other shot and put it in that shot?" I <laughs> said, "Yeah, sure." But we, we, we went back and forth with that numerous times. Oh, no, no, good, he didn't like it. And can you... I can't tell you, numerous times. I got, I got to the point where I thought he was kidding me after a while. <laughs> I said, wait a minute. I know and I, what I'm mind you, boys and girls, this was a time when it was done with scissors and glue, right? I, I said, you know, I don't see what he hates about this. This looks okay to me. It's a natural pose. It, he, oh, he, he didn't like the angle or something. So, whatever. Uh, let me ask you a funny thing. This was a time when Gene is widely known since that he was wearing a wig. Why? Because since he was trying to become this movie star, he cut his hair really short, you know, kind oh, of. Yeah, right. Kind of a Julio Iglesias type of haircut, <laughs> you know. Uh, just I remember the the sh still photos from the movie. It was the what was the name of that movie? A Runaway. Yeah, Runaway. So I remember some of the stills, right? And he played this evil guy. I guess yeah, well, I never saw the movie. I never uh, saw it. I never saw it. It's it's very. It it it, it, it uh, he hasn't aged well. Let's just say that. And he's not doing a lot of acting either, really. I mean, it's just, you know, expressions a lot. But my question was, I mean. my question was going to be, whenever he was showed up, because he wore a wig from 1984 to 1989, that he had short hair or his hair wasn't cool enough to be, uh, you know, a rock star. So my question is, was she showing up like, with no wig and then putting on the wig right up, right before the photo shoot, or we was just showed up with a wig on. No, no, he had it on the whole time. I, I never saw the short hair in person. Ah, that's that was, I always wonder about that. Never saw the short hair in person. Uh, I remember one time in the office, uh, I was talking to Gene about something, and uh, he said to me, hey, and I was starting to get thin little bit, not as much as today, uh -huh. but I was starting, starting to go. And, uh, and he said, you have, you have more hair than I do. He said <laughs> to me, but, but he had, a, he wears these horrible wigs that they don't, they don't look real or convincing at all. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <terrible. laughs> the guy with a lot of money, he could get the best. His son, you know, remember his show on TV? Yeah. 
And his son used to say, call it a hair hat. <laughs> like a helmet. It's, it didn't look anything like hair. It just looked like a, a, a mat of black stuff that you stuck on your head. It was terrible. I think his wig fell on stage once, and that's why he incorporated kind of a, a headband with studs. To Good keep, idea. To keep the wig <laughs> in place. <laughs> that's got to be embarrassing. I bet it was. There's no oh. pictures of it or video or anything. But oh, the, Lord, the, help me. The legend is that the, the, the wig... If I wore a um, hairpiece, I'd have that son of a bitch glued on. I would have that glued on. I would not take a chance, ever. <laughs> This album kind of started what a lot of people consider kind of the, the cheesy, uh, unfortunate clothing era for the band, even though the picture in the back is pretty sober compared to what, what they're wearing on stage. Street clothes, right. Street clothes. And that the annualized era, just to leak it up, presented two sets of wardrobes that the band were wearing depending on what they were doing. They have a certain wardrobe for photo shoots for album covers and magazines, which was more more street clothes. But for live, they were wearing very trashy, almost uh, raggedy clothes, all torn up and different color. Very like a mix of a gym class and a Broadway show, very colorful. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense that they would experiment a little bit with different looks. If they didn't have an, an exact costume per se, to wear mm -hmm. that it was it was a matter of well today I'll wear the ripped shirt and you know I'll I'll wrap the zebra skin around my leg and right you know it was just uh, uh, they were having fun being creative and it was more a casual deal you know that's that's about it I mean right and all right there's another image that was used a lot for either promotion or even covers. He was the co he was on the cover of the, the VHS. I think it was the first Kiss VHS they ever released. It was uh, that show in, in Detroit at the Cobo Hall, and it was entitled Animalized and Uncensored. But there was a, this uh, female claws ripping through the cover, you know? And they also used it for the back of the tour book of the analyzed tour. So uh, did you do that? Uh, I certainly did. All right, uh, tell, it, tell uh, me the story. Uh, the, way you, uh, the way you were introduced it was a little off because uh, you, you said they used it for the VHS tape and they also used it for the tour book back cover. Uh -huh. But it, it was created for the tour book back cover. Oh, it was specially created for the back cover. Okay, got yes. it. And then they took that image and went crazy with it, you know. Right. Okay, got it. Uh, right. So um, uh, what happens sometimes is, you know, I'm designing stuff. Um, I'm doing the tour book uh, cover. What was on the cover? On the cover, there's a picture of the band. Actually, there were two covers. First, they released one with uh, ah, that's with, the one Mark, with Mark, and then when Mark was out of the picture, released another one with Bruce. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I think that I think that's a hard tour book to get a hold of, isn't it? Uh no, not not as hard as some of the seventies one. The seventies one are the hardest because they're more expensive. But now I think the 80s are getting expensive too, but I got these a while ago, so I didn't pay that much, you know? Take a look and uh, see if the, that price went up. I will. But anyway, yeah. I will. So, uh, uh, so I, I did the tour book and I'm, I'm thinking there has to be something on the back cover and I don't, I don't have a back cover. So uh, I don't know how I thought of that uh, image. Uh, things come to you. Things come to you. I, I God, thank you, God. You know, <laughs> I guess that's where it comes from, right? Well, uh, in, uh, yeah, it's, sure. Uh, it's, you can call it inspiration, or the ideas came from the ether, or whatever. You know. Yeah, and inspiration. God, inspiration. God, God, and, God is a good one. Sure. Yeah, I think inspiration and ether are the same as saying God. Right. It's just all interchangeable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 
and then they pop into your head miraculously. Just when, I, just when you need them. <laughs> Hopefully, right? But there was no process that led me to that image. It wasn't like, oh, I should have something uh, animalizy, mm -hmm. or I should, well, maybe that's how I started. I come to think of it. <laughs> but um, one day I was in my apartment building. Okay. I was in my elevator going down. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, on my way to work in the morning. Okay. And the uh, elevator stopped at one of the lower floors. And this young lady get on. And I know her. Uh, she's my neighbor. I said, hi, Phyllis. Hi. She presses lobby. And I notice her hand. And I say, hmm, interesting. <laughs> did, you say, did you say it with that German voice from yeah, our... yeah, very interesting, right. So, <laughs> like, and, oh, yeah, and I went like this, too. <laughs> okay. Which so I'm, I sure, said, I'm sure she didn't think it was creepy. No, she, <laughs> especially when I said, hey, Phyllis, how'd you like to make $100? <laughs> That, yeah, right. What? So uh, I quickly explained, you know, okay. I said, I, I like your... By the way, I, I've been in that situation. I've been in that exact same spot when I was like in, 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 uh, in art school or just starting doing small jobs here and there. I would see some girl on the, on the street that she was pretty enough for the photo shoot or whatever, photo shoot, sorry. And just trying in the middle of the street, trying to explain to her that it, it wasn't a line. I am actually I'm a photographer. I'm gonna do. There's gonna be all other people on the photo shoot, not just us. And I, <laughs> I've been in that spot. <laughs> it's a little tough. It's a little tough. I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You gotta be sincere. You, you, yeah, yeah. You, you gotta uncreepify yourself. So, you <laughs> so there's want... so Phyllis, Phyllis was intrigued by this, okay. and I said, "Here's the photographer's name." phone number. Here's my phone number at the office. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll call you. I'll give you a, a time and a day. We're going to do this within the next day or two. She said, fine. So we make the date. She shows up at the photographer who was David Spindell, by the way, uh -huh. who also did the elder. He did the, the cover and uh, the That's interior. Right. Yeah. And I, and David was a go-to guy for many, many jobs that I had. Not a lot of kiss stuff, except for the elder. More, uh, more, more uh, type of products, products, and uh, yeah, products and other clients that we had that were definitely not rock and roll or music, you know. Gotcha. Uh, I had diaper services as a client. <laughs> Please do send it. <laughs> so I, I will. So I was, uh, I, I was auditioning little babies all the time. So that, yeah, so I had all these other clients, and David, David shot that stuff for me. So, um, I called David. I said, here's what we're going to do, David. I want her her hands. Uh, I need a manicurist. Get a manicurist down there. We're going to put long red fingernails on her. Longer than probably a person would actually wear in real life. Not today, though. Today, here we go. Man. You see some of these women today? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, they, yeah. They, 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 and they put like crazy designs. Some oh, like yeah. Oh, yeah. Everything. Yeah, very yeah. right. So, but back then, uh, not so much. So, uh and, and I said, and they're going to come to points because it has to look a little evil and a little animalistic uh -huh. and like a half a hand and a half a claw, you know. So he got this woman and she did a great job. And uh, uh, David uh, set up that white paper and he meticulously ripped it. Five rips, I guess it is. Four and one for the thumb, right? And then he took, uh, I guess it was fingernail polish and dripped it and mm -hmm. it, it came out really, really nice. And uh, we shot it and there you go. Thank you, Phyllis. And that's, and, uh, uh, back, and that's the back of both, both tour books. Yeah. Uh, the same, the same back. Yeah why, yeah. why not? I mean, it's a good back cover. I like making simple images that are, that have power. Right. There's no innuendo. 
There's no reading between the lines. Like no you superfluous did, stuff, you know. It's just, like you did, uh, like you did with the love gun insert and uh, and thank the, you and the thank notes, you. the notes for a lot. Exactly, exactly. exactly. Yeah. Especially the blood logo. That that's another one. Right, right. It's just it's just simple and powerful. You get it right away, you know. So uh, uh, Phyllis is no longer with us, and. Uh, I don't think I don't think she was alive more than a couple of years after that picture. Did but, you ever uh, use her? Did you ever use her for anything else? Other than no, that? no, not at all. That was a one shot deal. And uh, hey, I noticed that uh, the, the the covers of the of the this photo shoot they did for the tour book that has a white background. They have also individual photos uh, with this same wardrobe, um, and this one is the original one with Mark. They all have a white background, very similar to Lick It Up. The lighting is also similar, but they're wearing more flamboyant uh, wardrobe with, you know, not glare or not trashy, but kind of a <laughs> questionable. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, it was like, I think I'll wear this belt with those gloves and maybe that, you know, there was no rhyme or reason. Right. That was whatever they felt like doing. So it was a uh, very outrageous, creative, very animalistic. You know? I didn't mind that look. I didn't mind it. It was all right. You know. Did you ever? Did you ever wear anything with animal print back then? <laughs> <laughs> did you? Uh, what the hell did I wear? I don't know. You know. <laughs> I wasn't old enough. I wasn't old enough for that. I was, when uh, you looked at when you looked at me, you knew I wasn't an accountant. Let's just put it that way. You were in what? <laughs> what? I was not an accountant. Were you present in any of these photo shoots with a white background? I don't think I was. No. I hate to say yes because I'm uh, pretty sure I don't remember. Yeah, like you said, when the photo shoot was was simple enough, they probably went all on their own to whatever photographer and just got it done very very quickly. Yeah, it, was, it was probably one of the guys we used is you know whoever yeah because I, uh uh unlike the very elaborate photo shoots you were doing when they were in makeup these were like stripped down just the background and the band posing and uh, there's no need for art direction for any of that right? no and uh, you know they were getting good at it being at photo shoots they 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 were not novices anymore right and uh that was probably Bernard. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. uh, but, let, me check, uh, let me check the the credits real quick. But they worked with him so often. Might have been Bernard. I don't know if it was, but it could have been. No. Nope. No. It's Neil Slotsbauer. He was a big photographer in the 80s. He would do all the photos for, I don't know, Hit Parader and all that. And, uh, What's his last did, name? Huh? What's his name? Neil Slotzauer. Slotzauer. Wow. Lutzlauer. Well, I can I can guarantee you I wasn't at that shoot because I don't I never met him. You never met him. He was the one who shot the photo shoot that's on the cover of uh, the 1985 Creatures of the Night edition, the one with no makeup and Bruce. Oh, all right. Okay. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Neil was a LA photographer. He did all the 80s bands, all the hair bands. Oh, no wonder why I never met him. He was on the other coast. Yeah, he's an LA uh, photographer. Yes. Yeah, they weren't flying me around that much, so. Right. No, I think mean, he came to fame in the 80s, okay? So uh, probably when they were carrying you around, like that when that time, that time you went with them to LA in 77, remember? Or 78? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So anyways, um, so you weren't present in any of this promotional photo shoots? No, with the... not, not those, no. Nope. Okay, all right. This era of the band also was uh, uh, characterized by a revolving door of guitar players. Like from 19, between 1983 and 1984, they had three guitar players in two years, you know? And uh, the first one obviously was Vinnie Vincent, the one that came after Ace, the one that played Lick It Up and some of Creatures of the Night. Then Animalize, 
was recorded by another guy called Mark, Mark St. John, tall, goofy kind of looking guy. You Mark, know? yeah, not Mark. And then towards the middle of the Animalized tour, they replaced Mark with Bruce. Mark had some kind of a condition, a threat, a threat condition in his hand. That's what I heard. Like yeah, that's what I heard. So did you did you ever meet Mark and Bruce respectively? Well, I met Mark. They, they uh, when when Vinny and and Mark uh, joined the band, uh -huh. they they did they brought them in to meet me. You met you mentioned that yes. Yeah, they did. They brought them in to meet me, and uh, uh, I don't remember too much about it. Just uh, you know, ordinary uh, hello, how are you? And uh, that was you know that was about it. Uh, Bruce, of course, he was with the band more. Way more. Mark was with the band yeah. less than a year. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he wasn't arth arthritis or not. He wasn't going to be with the band. I don't, you know, they, they, uh, everything I read, they said he just didn't fit. This guitar player was very into uh, shredding and playing a lot of notes. A lot of notes, a lot of notes. Yeah, a lot right. of notes and doing, you know, the shredding part, which sometimes. Some guitar players, not all of them, do way more than simple melodies that anybody can remember and, and, and just sing, sing to. You know what I mean? So this was from this new generation of guitar players. I felt they, they had to play everything super fast and 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 and, and just a million notes per, per hour. And, right. And that didn't sit well with any of the other members of the band. Even, even Eric didn't like that, you know? So... Uh, I think that's. Don't know, yeah, it's like you don't know what the hell's happening. Everything else. It's a, so you met Mark. Yeah, I met Mark. Uh, it just uh, you know, and I and we did the photo shoot. Yeah. So he was there for that, but other than that shoot and meeting him, I think that was about it. What about Bruce? Well, Bruce was in and out a lot. He was you know member of the band, pretty mm -hmm. solid. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that was that. I mean, you know. But, yeah, I like Bruce. He's a, he's a yeah, good... just a sweet guy, nice guy, very low-key, pretty humble, you know. No, no, he is. He is. I like yeah. him. He's actually, yeah, yeah. he's actually my favorite uh, lead guitar player from KISS. Yeah, good player. Real good player. So that was it, you know. That's all I remember about Bruce. So I'll, I'll, uh, I guess I'll see you in the next one, which is going to be Asylum. Okay. All right. See you next time, Venice. <laughs> Bye.